So in this video, we will be looking at self-organizing lists. And uh, self-organizing lists is exactly what it says. It organizes itself. So there are three basic methods, move to front, transpose, and count. So the move to front method is when an element is accessed by the user. So you call upon the element to be accessed. Then the front element and that element are swapped. So just from the front, A, C, E, F. If E is accessed, then A and E will be swapped directly. All the other elements remain in the exact same positions. For the transpose method, what happens is if I access in the same list as this one, E, then it will be swapped with its direct predecessor, or the element which comes directly before itself. So if I access E, it will be swapped with C. And then there's the count method. The count method counts the number of times that an element is accessed. And of course, this is the best way to do it because it's the most... It, it's the most accurate in terms of determining which element should be at the front of the list because it's accessed the most and which element is accessed the least and should be at the back. So if I, in this case, access E, then we'll see that it's been accessed twice and that F has only been accessed once, therefore F and E will be swapped. Then if I access E again, then we'll see that E has been accessed twice, but C has still been accessed three times, so it's still more times. If I access E yet again, then it'll have been accessed four times because it was already accessed once. Therefore, it's been accessed four times. So then it will be swapped with C, and our order will be 5431 A E C F. Okay, we're going to look at a quick programming example of. Uh, transpose method for self-organizing. So we're given the following class for a circular doubly linked list. So let me just fill in these double links. There we go. So we're given the following circular doubly linked list class and it's of a template type. We've got our private node which has a data, a next and a previous and we have public t data and we have our next and previous no t pointers so here we are given some methods we assume that all these are implemented except the one that we are going to implement so all the others are implemented correctly so this is to insert at the tail insert at the head uh, delete from the tail delete from the head and this is to check if it's empty this is to check if it is contained within the circular list already the element el and then, of course, we have our transpose self-organizing strategy, which is the one that swaps with the direct predecessor. And then we have our, our pointer to our tail. That's the only pointer we have directly to the tail of the list, the end of the list, the circular list. So now it says, write a function called transpose, as in the class, that will swap the data items for the transpose self-organizing strategy. So all it has to do is swap the actual items. You don't have to take the whole node and put it in its new place. So, public boolean, and we're returning a boolean, which means we'll return true if it was accessed in the list, and false if it wasn't in the list. And we have the element that we need to access, T-E-L. So how do we approach this? Well, if we think about a list, any list, then the first thing you're going to want to check is if it's empty. Because if it's empty, then you can just return. Because why would you want to go through all that code if you can just return? So, I'm going to type right here, if... And I'm using the is empty method over here. If is empty. Well, if it's empty, then we'd like to insert this at the tail. Or you can just simply return. But the ideal is to insert it at the tail. So we have an add to tail method here. So we're going to say to tail. And we're going to put el in there. And of course, it wasn't in the list, so we want to return false to indicate that it wasn't in the list originally. Okay. Now the next thing is, what if what if the list does have elements in? It's not empty, but this element's not in the list. We have to check for that as well. So there's the case where it's empty, the case where it is not contained within the list, and the case where it is in the list, which is what we'll deal with last. So else if. So let's see, we have a contains method. So if contains 
E-L. But we want to check if it does not exist in the list. So not. We use the exclamation mark for not in the list. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want to add it to the tail as well. And we are also going to return false. Okay, now we get to the part where we know it's in the list. We know the list is not empty either. So, now we're going to want to create a variable to traverse the list. Because we don't want to use our tail variable to go tail.next, tail.next, or tail.prev the whole time. Because we're going to lose our tail pointer in that case. Tail is going to be assigned to a new value. And we don't want that. We want to know, we still want to know where the end of the list or the tail is. So, I'm going to create a node t temp is assigned tail okay then we want to find the element so we want to find the element within the list because we to in, in order to swap it uh, for its access we have to find the actual element but we also want to find the element before it because we want to swap the element with the element before itself so therefore, we're going to say while. We want to check if the data here is equal to the data that we're that we have in temp.next. You can use temp, but I'm using temp.next because I want to keep the pointer before temp as well. We're going to use it to swap the data item. So I'm going to say while not temp.next dot data dot equals el which is the element from there so we're checking to see is temps is the so let's say temp is pointing here I'm checking is temp next data equal to the element yes or no and is it not of that so is it not equal to the next one if it's not equal to the next one then you want to keep traversing so temp is assigned temp dot next unnecessary curly brackets but yeah okay so once this is done once this loop is run we know that the element exists within the list because we check that it's not empty and we check that it's contained within the list and it's passed both these if statements so we definitely know we definitely know it's in the list so it will find it within this while loop it has to okay so now we know that temp.next's data is the data we want to swap with its predecessor. So therefore we are going to say, we're going to create a temp variable to hold the element we want to swap with. So temp.next.data. So now the next's data is in tempy. Now we can safely assign over temp.next.data temp, let me just move this up a bit, temp.next.data is assigned temp.data. So now what happened is, is we said tempy gets this next data item, so within tempy Let's say we're swapping 5 and 7, we have now 7. Then we're going to say temp.next.data, which is 7, gets temp.data, which is 5. And then we can say, okay, well, temp.data can now be assigned tempy. I ran out of space somehow. And then we're simply going to return after that. So if I carry on here, we're going to say return close our brackets and that is basically it so we can check that it works we can say well if it's empty we know it's not going to be empty we know that it's contained within the the circular list else no temp is assigned tail so let's say we're accessing nine okay so while temp.next.data is not equal to the element so five so we're on five because that's the tail element. Let me just get another color. So now the next is seven and our current 
temp is 5. So temp is 5 and temp.next is 7. So temp.next is not equal to elements, so we move on. So now temp is at 7. Now we say, okay, is the next equal to 9? Yes, it is. So therefore the while loops can exit. Temp is currently pointing here. And temp.next is currently pointing there. So now we say, okay, we're out of the while loop. Temp is assigned temp.next.data. So now temp is equal to temp.next.data, which is 9. Now temp.next.data is going to be assigned temp.data. So this is temp's data, so 7 is going to be put there. And now we say temp.data is assigned tempi, which is 9. So we put 9 in where temp was. And then we simply return.